Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to KNA's final webinar of 2021. Today's topic is real time simulations, solving the complexity of the evolving electrical power grid, presented by three of KNA's subject matter experts on this topic Eva Nasiri, Guru Sigdel, and Prosper Panumpapi. My name is Anna Hanley, Director of Marketing for KNA. And I will again be serving as the moderator for today's webinar. Before we start, I have just a few housekeeping items. Please remain on mute throughout the presentation. We will have scheduled time at the end for a question and answer session. If you have any questions during the presentation, please type them into the chat box found in the lower right of your screen and we'll answer those questions during the Q&A session. To start, I'd like to share a safety moment on winter safety, specifically three aspects to keep in mind. First, driving safety. When driving during inclement weather, it's important to stay extra attentive. Be aware of slick road conditions and increase your following distance to give you enough time to stop. It's a good idea to carry an emergency kit in your car, including such things as jumper cables, blankets, snacks, and bottled water should you find yourself in a situation where you need to shelter in your car. Second, regarding snow shoveling. It's important to stretch first and stay hydrated while you're shoveling. Also dress in layers so that you can shed clothing as you start to heat up while shoveling snow. Finally, use caution on surfaces covered with snow and ice. Walk slowly taking small steps and wear shoes with good tread. Be sure to use salt or ice melt on those surfaces that you just shoveled so the wet pavement doesn't freeze and become a slipping hazard. Now I'd like to introduce today's three presenters. Kiva has a PhD in electrical engineering from the Illinois Institute of Technology. Prior to joining KNA, Kiva was with Quanta Technology. Since August this year, he has served as KNA as a senior engineer leading our RTS efforts. Kiva has been involved in many projects, including the development of IIT's microgrid model in RTDS. Next will be Puru, who has a PhD in computer science from the University of Louisiana at Lafayette. Before joining KNA, Puru was a visiting assistant professor at the university. His research interests include machine learning, high-performance computing architectures, interconnection networks, and fault tolerance. Our third presenter today will be Prosper, who is a Master of Electrical Engineering from the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. Prosper has extensive experience working with RTS for more than 10 years. He has been on different RTS projects with the University of Illinois, Texas A&M University, University of Washington, the Department of Defense, Department of Energy, Department of Homeland Security, and Power Systems Engineering Research Center. With that, I'd like to turn it over to my colleague, Eva. Thank you, Anna. Uh, hello, everyone. This is Eva. I will walk you through today's webinar. Uh, uh, the, the webinar consists of four sections. Uh, in the next section, Puru will present to you the history of RTS, a little bit background on analog simulators, then uh, digital simulators, currently what companies provide this tool, uh, and a little bit more about uh, how the tool is, uh, the components of a RTS. Then I will present to you uh, what's going on behind the scene of the tool? What type of uh, uh, analysis does the tool do? And uh, how the tool can be utilized in an actual case. After that, we will have a video from uh, RTDS, this portion of a larger video, which demonstrates the uh, hardware in the loop case. Uh, and then at the end, my colleague Prosper will present to you the current challenges in our power system 
and uh, how this tool can mitigate uh, those challenges. So with this, I'd like to hand it over to my colleague Puru to provide you a brief history and background of RTS. Good afternoon all. Thank you, Heva, for the short introduction and overview of the presentation. In this presentation, I will cover background. Imagine a power failure right now. Exactly, we cannot imagine our life without electricity. A power system are the most complex sign human made structure. When a system grows, failure are common. To fully understand such a big structure, we need highly qualified power engineers and a set of RTS tools. Set of tools. RTS is one of such tools. What is real-time simulation? Real-time simulation refers to a model of a physical system that can execute at the same rate as the actual wall clock time. And RTS can test existing or new technologies to validate them under our critical infrastructure in less risky environment. Here, the critical infrastructure referring is an electrical power grid as an example. Additionally, RTS allows testing a piece of equipment hardware in the loop before its actual deployment in the critical system. How and why, how, how and why did arrive at the digital model of a simulator? In the figure uh, on the right, a represents an analog simulator, also called a transient network analyzer. In the figure, we can see a big hall full of equipment for simulating a scaled down version of system. We can feel the pain here. How cumbersome the setup, setting up a simulation model. Can we transfer this setup to another part of the world? If yes, how difficult. If we want to expand the model, what about the space? How much do we need to spend on these types of equipments and how much for maintaining them? Additionally, the noise, I mean signal to noise in an analog system is much higher and it disrupts the evaluation. In a digital real-time simulator, all components are converted to a computer model combine them together to replicate a physical system and executes it at the same rate as actual global clock time. Since the physical system becomes a file, we can imagine how easy it to handle is compared to that as compared to actual physical components. In the North America region, there are mainly three commercial RTS tools. RTDS, Opal RT, and Typhoonial. RTDS started in 1994. Opal RT has been active in the power grid area since 2007, while Typhoonial begins its service in 2008. Each RTS has its customized hardware and software for end into end solution. For example, RTDS has RSCAD, Opal RT has RT Lab and Hypersim, and Typhoon Hill has a Typhoon Hill control center as software. Opal RT's RT Lab is integrated with the MATLAB and Simulink. Each RTS software must implement an electromagnetic transient program, EMTP, for solving the system in real time. If you are interested in EMTP, please explore Dormel's 1968 paper. These slides present a general system architecture of an RTS. RTS. How hardware, hardware computing unit consists of multi-core processor or FPGA. The software contains the model library and all fundamental elements of power system so that the new systems 
or equipment can be designed, be designed and tested accordingly. They have customized IO interface card to in interact with the physical system as well. A device under test is interface with the RTS hardware software for its evaluation. In this, in this slide, as a use case RTS software, I use RSCAD, which is RTS proprietary software. Of similar features also exist in Opal RT and Type O'Neill software. RSCAD has a two mode of operation, draft mode and runtime mode. In the draft mode, we draw our model using model library component radially available in the library section. If we want to implement a control signal, we might need to combine the, the low level components. And in the runtime mode, we execute the model. This is also an interface between a user and RTDS. A user can set multiple test cases and measure the response at the point of interest. If the test cases are many, interacting with the interface is tedious and there exists the automated testing approach. Automated testing works with a script file which contains a set of test cases realized through conditional and loop statement. The collection of test case and corresponding results are dumped into a file for a future analysis. Additionally, these test cases with outputs are applicable to create a digital twins of a system or components itself. How will it help to redefine the system? Let's see how it works, how digital twins work. We create a live replica of a system, including every equipment. We track the past information, include each and every scenario and the system's response. We gather the RTS response for each of the given test cases that we discussed in the last slide. We train each component's machine learning model with the past track data and RTS simulation test test set to make a small digital twins of a system. Our digital twin interacts with the existing physical system and predict the future, such as life expectancy of electrical equipment, such as transformer, component failure, blackout, and many more. In this sense, digital twins will be faster than the RTS itself. Thank you. Thank you all for having me. And now I will hand over the floor to him. Thank you, Puru. Let's uh, have a summary of uh, what we just had in the first part. So Puru explained what an RT is uh, and uh, what type of uh, simulations it does, why it came to the uh, power system. Uh, first, it was analog. It had challenges, required a huge amount of space, and the maintaining was uh, expensive. And then it went to move to digital simulators into many uh, benefits. And then uh, we introduced to you three uh, major companies that provide this type of uh, service and have developed this type of uh, tools. Uh, what components uh, it, uh, the, any tool that performs RTS studies uh, must have, as well as some uh, software features and uh, how to automate uh, uh, some case studies, as well as how uh, the data extracted from these case studies can be used uh, for predict the future. Next, I'll explain the uh, uh, behind the scene of RTS. What does an RTS tool do? To begin with, we have two type of uh, simulations. We have phasor domain simulations and we have time domain simulations. In a phasor domain simulation, we mostly consider the system running on one frequency, fundamental frequency. And then we convert everything from time to phasor and we only consider magnitude and uh, angle. And we take a snapshot of the network. So phasor domain is only one uh, shot of the system. Uh, this is the typical phasor domain study, which is normally used for power flow. Uh, time domain study on the, on the other side uh, considers the changes of the system through time, either in magnitude or angle of voltage and power through the system, uh, different buses, different areas. 
uh, or the voltages at an instantaneous uh, three phase level. So transient stability normally calculates the changes of um, uh, angles of different buses uh, to see if the system remains stable or not. Uh, electromagnetic transient simulations uh, uh, are used to provide instantaneous values of how uh, currents and voltages change in the system and how uh, they contribute to uh, harmonics in introduction in the system. RTDS, RTS tools, sorry, RTS tools does uh, uh, this type of studies, uh, electromagnetic transient studies. Uh, uh, in this, in the next slide uh, here, uh, in this slide we see uh, the, the the time required uh, for these type of studies. I say the phasor domain. It is not a time base. It just gives you one snapshot of the system. The time domain has two uh, type of studies, uh, transient stability, which is in order of milliseconds, and electromagnetic transient is in the order of microseconds. It's for simulating fast phenomena like switching in, a, in an inverter uh, and to see how does that affect the system. Uh, and on and, and, and the chart on the far right, you see different phenomenons, uh, uh, time scale and uh, the order of the time. In the next slide, uh, I want to explain uh, the, the real time feature here. So we have uh, simulators, for example, PSCAD, PSSC, SIMES, uh, that if we use uh, uh, them to, to study uh, like a transient uh, study or electromagnetic transient studies, um, we we don't get the result on a real time base. So uh, what the what a real time uh, response means when you perform the simulation, for example, you do 20 seconds after one second, uh, an actual one second, you should get the result of one uh, second inside the simulator as well. Uh, when we reach second second, we should get also the result of uh, second second of the uh, simulator. Uh, so it, it doesn't. Uh, so definitely, the answer must be calculated before reaching to that time. But if it's far faster calculated, it should be kept until we reach the actual here second, then get the answer. Uh, so uh, normal uh, softwares either calculated faster or calculated uh, slower, depends on the the process and. and, and complication of the system, but uh, RTS tools uh, like RTDS, Opal RT, and Typhoon Eel, uh, they calculated faster, uh, keep the result, and then uh, sample the result exactly at a real-time uh, base. Uh, this type of simulators have been there. We had analog, we had uh, digital simulators right now we are using. Uh, so when a system is capable of real-time simulations, we can extract a portion of that network, convert it to an actual signal, and 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 work with it. Now, in the next slide, here in in this uh, graph, you can see we are actually uh, having a small system, two generators, one transmission line. We are getting some signals from the side of the transmission converting them to actual signals and then giving them to a power amplifier, uh, converting those to actual voltage and current and giving those voltage and currents to the relay. Uh, and the, the response of the relay will be feed back to, to the network. This is a hardware in the loop. Since the simulator is capable of performing on a real-time base, uh, we are capable of doing such uh, um, uh, experiments or, or such uh, sort of studies. Uh, this has been uh, proved to be very useful in terms of uh, uh, testing different uh, devices and different concepts uh, and uh, is one of the main features of this tool. Uh, our colleague at, uh, at RTDS, they have uh, created uh, a video. Uh, we have uh, selected a portion of this video for you. It demonstrates an hardware in the loop. 
an actual test in the lab that they have performed. Uh, I, would I would invite you to take a look. Also, I want to thank uh, RTDS team for allowing us to use this uh, video in our presentation. Back into the simulation to close the loop. A simulation case has been developed in the draft module of RSCAD for testing the physical distance protection relay. The case includes a transmission line containing a fault branch, the position and resistance of which can be defined and varied by the user from the runtime module. Two circuit breakers isolate the line. On each end of the line are current transformers and capacitive voltage transformers to provide secondary level currents and voltages to protective relays. Circuit breaker one is controlled by a software relay simulated in RSCAD. This distance protection module is available in the RSCAD component library. Circuit breaker two is controlled by the physical relay connected to the simulator. The analog output component defines the signals that will be sent out of the simulation via amplifiers to the relay. The digital to analog conversion is carried out by the RTDS simulator's GTAO card. In this case, the burden currents and voltages from the CTs and CVTs are the outputs. The front panel interface component is used to provide a digital interface to the relay. It defines signals to be communicated via the digital input and output panel mounted in the RTDS simulator cubicle. Here, the output contacts from the physical relay are used as input signals to control the software breaker. The high voltage panel component is used to define signals to be communicated via the high voltage digital output panel mounted in the RTDS simulator cubicle. This panel is capable of switching at station level voltage, and here it's used for breaker status signals. In this demonstration, the user can trigger a fault to check for the correct response from the physical distance protection relay. The voltages and currents will be sent out of the simulation via the RTDS simulator's GTAO card. The GTAO card features 12 optically isolated 16-bit digital to analog conversion channels. The signals are sent from a PB5 processor card participating in the simulation to the GTAO card via fiber optic cable. The GTAO card has a maximum output range of plus or minus 10 volts peak. A power amplifier is used to scale up the output waveform and test the relay using its in-service operating voltages and currents. The GTAO outputs are connected to the amplifier's input channels and gain levels are carefully set and tested to ensure that the amplifier's output values are as expected. The amplifier outputs are then connected to the protective relay's analog inputs. The protective relay's output contacts are connected to the RTDS simulator's digital interface panel to communicate breaker commands. The simulator's high voltage panel is connected to the relay's input channels to communicate breaker status. In this way, we've created a closed loop between the RTDS simulator and the protective relay. Once our hardware is set up and everything is configured properly in our software, we can compile our case and open the runtime console to start our simulation. From the runtime module, the user can adjust which phases are faulted, as well as the fault's position on the line and the duration, resistance, and fault inception angle. When ready, the user can press the push button to activate their fault. This user can automate this process by generating a script file for batch mode testing and report generations for hundreds or thousands of test cases. After the fault is triggered, an inspection of the physical relay shows the expected response. In the software, we see the circuit breakers open accordingly, and we can view data describing the system's response before, during, and following the fault. Protection testing with the RTDS simulator can also be conducted using an IEC 61850 interface. The RTDS simulator's GTNet X2 network interface card allows the simulator to communicate with the physical relay using LAN-based protocols. As an alternative to using the GTAO card for analog output, the current and voltage signals from the simulation case could be sent to the relay using IEC 61850-9-2 sampled values data. The breaker commands and status could be communicated via IEC 61850 goose messaging. I hope you have enjoyed uh, the, video, the video presented by uh, RTDS. We also again thank them for uh, 
uh, the nice video and allowing us to uh, also present it again here for this webinar. Let me summarize what we learned so far. Uh, in this section of the presentation, we learned about uh, different type of studies in power system and which type of study RTES tools uh, perform. Uh, the, the time domain, phaser domain, uh, transient simulations, electromagnetic type of simulations, which RTS uh, tools perform, uh, the difference between real-time and non-real-time simulations, and also at the end, we learned about a hardware in the loop cases, and we saw a video in this regard. So all these came to hear that uh, RTS are capable of, uh, provide, of uh, giving us uh, an ability to test a hardware uh, within a simulator, so the the big the the larger portion of the network can be simulated inside the tool, and only uh, signals at different sections can be exported. Using this feature, uh, we can uh, perform uh, various uh, uh, tasks. Uh, here here are some of them, like we can perform wide area protection testing, getting data from different PMUs and see how they, they work. Uh, we can um, also, well, this is outside the, the, the hardware in the loop, but we can also simulate a large portion of the network. We can perform hardware in the loop, of course, uh, tests like control tests or power hardware in the loop tests. We can uh, test uh, devices, uh, relays, inverters, uh, we can also see how the effects of uh, uh, low changes or uh, introduction of uh, distributor generations affects the system. So uh, my colleague Nick Prosper will explain further on this. He will explain uh, what, what are current challenges that utilities are facing. Uh, which this tool can be used to mitigate and to understand those challenges. Uh, so um, I will invite you uh, to the next section, which will be presented by my colleague uh, Prosper. Uh, thank you, Dr. Eva. Uh, thank you, Dr. Puru. We learned that a real-time uh, simulator RTS is a tool that uh, Power engineer used to replicate in a lab setting a physical electrical power grid. Uh, this tool is used to verify or to validate the design, the control, and uh, operation of uh, the electrical power grid in real time. Real time simulator allowed to test at will and uh, in a less risky environment, all principle and technology to deploy on the electrical power grid. Real-time simulator allowed to get the proof of concept. Uh, it is the only tool that allowed to combine in one place the feature of major software that power engineer use uh, for the modeling and the operation of uh, the power grid. In our day today, work as electrical engineer, we use uh, software tools. Um, let us together walk through this scenario. Uh, I am using, uh, for example, uh, the software uh, PACC, PowerWall, the PSLF, uh, to compute the transmission power grid. Then I realized that on top of my steady state or stability uh, simulation, I need to incorporate protection study. I need to change tools and use uh, uh, a tool like uh, uh, the software SIM, ASPEN, etc. And down the road, one more time, I want to be able to communicate with uh, um, uh, devices, I will use uh, another software like uh, GridLabD. And finally, I want my simulation to be able to communicate with a, a hardware relay like uh, Swatch Engineering, ABB, Siemens, uh, etc. And uh, I want to see uh, 
inside my power grid that the reaction went a really trip. The only tool to do all in one place is the real time simulator. The main question I will address here is uh, a real time simulator can be used to better assist the utility in their challenging day to day operation. From the traditional power grid where the flow of current was in the directional, today the power grid has bi-directional power flow. The protection of uh, the power grid has become so complex, complex due to the bi-directional flow, complex due to the large change in short circuit level in different topology of the power grid, a complex uh, due to the degradation of the power quality. The power grid has seen a large introduction of power electronic converter. Those uh, power uh, converter have uh, inside them um, component switching at a very high frequency than the traditional uh, 60 or 50 hertz. Uh, and those uh, uh, switching have a negative effect on the quality of delivered electricity. The large expectation of government to have a large integration of renewable is a big challenge. I'm going to work with you uh, uh, in uh, the different challenges that face the today power grid. At KNA, we have expertise and uh, real time simulator resources to assist utility, independent operators, regulators, and the government administration to understand and solve those challenges for a better management of our critical infrastructure, the electrical power grid. The integration of renewable to the power grid uh, is uh, uh, a complex task to accomplish. A non-exhaustive list of problems is given uh, in uh, this uh, uh, presentation. I will walk through some uh, here, and uh, please uh, uh, feel free to contact us for more details. Microgrid connectivity to the power grid. The interconnection of a microgrid must meet the requirement defined in the standard REEE 1547 in a way to not perturb the power grid. Uh, modeling a commercial inverter uh, for impact study is a challenge question as uh, legitimately manufacturers are not sharing the details model of their equipment. Because of the bidirectional flow of uh, uh, current inside the microgrid, the protection scheme has become complex. And most of the time, it is automated to work under a multiple configuration. A microgrid, by its definition, is designed to work in a grid connected or high landing mode. The transition uh, between both configuration has considerable consequences that impact the security, impact power quality, impact the resiliency is not done uh, correctly. A microgrid might offer a black star capacity or uh, grid forming. They might also uh, to offer a grid support or grid uh, following service. The transition between the two modes is automated to provide a smooth uh, uh, operation of uh, uh, the uh, power grid. Renewable have a downsize, the uncertainty of their generation. The solar generation will pick uh, around the dawn while a wind generation will produce maximum power in the evening. The control of uh, storage is a complex uh, matter. 
to manage the complexity of microgrid, a controller basically is a set of intelligence is added to the microgrid. We need to test this intelligence under multiple working scenario. To have a large adoption of electrical vehicle, we have to develop fast charging station available within a maximum of uh, one mile from our highway from east to west coast. The challenge that utility are will face with electrical vehicle and electrical uh, vehicle charging station are management of charging station level one residential level two residential in the public and the level three dc fast charging the dc charge fast charging a lot to charge electrical vehicle uh, uh, between 5 to 30 minutes. Imagine on a busy street in California in the evening, 50 electrical uh, vehicles are connected at the same time to a substation for eight hours of charging. Because of the conversion uh, AC to DC, electrical vehicle station produce harmonics those harmonic uh, need to be mitigated. The extensive integration of electrical vehicle challenge the protection coordination of the power grid. Our US transmission electrical power has not been upgraded since a while. One consequence is, is uh, it operates uh, to the, uh, its uh, limit of uh, stability. Challenges are uh, question uh, uh, that utility are facing are uh, how to operate a power grid with a small margin of stability. How to validate the option for new transmission line construction, AC and DC. When a significant transmission line trip unexpectedly, consequences are most of the time damageable to the utility. A forensic analysis or post-mortem study must be completed to understand the root cause. This complex study requires many input to pinpoint the origin of land tripping and how to prevent or mitigate it. Today, the power electric is uh, an intelligent machine talking different language as we do. From a power grid where all signals were transported on copper wires, now signals are exchanged uh, using IAC 61A50 mod BASC and P3 GOOSE uh, languages, making uh, the operation of uh, the power grid more and more complex. No one can think a life without electricity. Utility, uh, are working around the clock uh, to supply electricity without interruption. The artificial intelligence is used to conduct a study on uh, how to uh, uh, increase the life expectancy or uh, uh, to prevent that uh, equipment might fail early than expected. Equipment as a transformer, equipment as a roster. Uh, in the same manner, intelligence artificial is used uh, to mitigate the blackout, combining uh, the information from the weather, the information from the power system, uh, 
uh, information from the social environment uh, to study how uh, we can mitigate uh, blackout. As we have seen through those long list of problems, the operation of the electrical power grid is and uh, will be a complex matter. We need advanced tools and expertise to model and uh, solve the different uh, arising problem. Real-time simulators are uh, uh, tools to solve and uh, uh, give us a proof of concept. They are what I will call one place solution to hold. At KNA, we are here to help you. I will encourage anyone to follow up on any question or issue that you want to learn more as we have a time limit here. Uh, please uh, send us an email. Why do you, uh, why uh, you may uh, decide to trust us at uh, Carrel and Associate Engineering, a consulting company. We are a diverse company with capability to perform and deliver work. We are a team of uh, real time simulator engineer with experience and dedicated uh, to what we do. We are polyvalent. That means we can work on any platform, a uh, real time simulator. It might be RTDS, Popal RT or Typhoon. We do have more than 10 years demonstrated experience, successful deliveries, working uh, with a uh, real time simulator uh, in the lab setup on multiple projects with a uh, research institution with a uh, utility uh, with uh, government administration. Thank you. Thank you, Prosper. Um, let me summarize the presentation. We had uh, four sections in this presentation. We tried to provide some history of RTS uh, tools. Uh, where did it come from? Uh, what does it do? Uh, what are the current uh, uh, companies that provide this tool, uh, which were RTDS, uh, uh, Opal RT, and Typhoon Hill? Uh, and then what are the components of uh, an RTS tool? Uh, and, and some more in the regarding the history of the tool and the tool itself. Then we explained a little bit of uh, behind the scene, what does the tool actually do? What uh, type of study does it do? Uh, and the capability of performing that type of study, which it was electromagnetic transient studies at a real time, uh, which uh, results in the tool's capability of performing hardware in the loop uh, studies. And we, uh, after that, demonstrated a video uh, provided by RTDS team. Uh, uh, demonstrating a power hardware in the loop uh, case uh, in the lab. And uh, at the last, uh, we presented uh, the challenges that currently uh, our power system uh, uh, is facing and uh, the challenges that will emerge in the power system, uh, including uh, integration of renewables, uh, integration of electric vehicles, uh, charging stations, uh, transmission reinforcement, and other challenges uh, that uh, my colleague Presper presented to you. Uh, and uh, with this, we conclude the presentation. I hope you learned uh, uh, something from this presentation, and we are open to answer your questions. Thank you very much. Thanks, Yuva, Puduru, and Prosper. Appreciate the information that you shared with us today. If you do have questions for any of our presenters, their information is shown here on the screen, um, their LinkedIn profile as well as their email. So uh, we encourage you to reach out to them. We do have several questions that have come into the chat during the presentation. 
So we're going to move through those here in the time that we have remaining. Any questions that we don't get to today or need a bit of a longer uh, explanation, we are going to send out a written transcript of the Q&A. So if we don't get to your question today, we apologize, but we'll try to answer that and send that out in a follow-up. So the first question I'm going to send to the group is, can you provide an example for a digital twin? Okay, let, let me take this question. Uh, digital twin itself is a big word and its meaning is very broader. For example, uh, uh, here in, in digital twins, we, we're trying to specify like a, a physical system or anything, maybe like a component label or as a whole system. Convert it into computer model, attach with the machine learn model in it, and based on the whenever that systems interact with the external environment, it can predict it's what will happen in the near near future. So if we if once we create that combined model together in case of let's see in a one substations and interface with the real substation and our digital twin can interact with that model and pro provide our predict information, predict the future events, what will happen in the next. And that 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 kind of solution already exists into like a, a digital commissioning of our equipment, like a Siemens has already started that, that kind of uh, sol solution as well. Thanks, Puru. The next question is, what are some software limitations? I can take that, uh, Anna. Uh, Siva. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Hiva. So uh, it really depends. Uh, uh, these uh, three uh, great uh, companies that provide this service have uh, uh, different softwares. Uh, RTDS has its own RSCAD. Uh, Typhoon Hill has its own uh, uh, software separate, and then Opal RT also the same. Uh, really depends on what you are first uh, uh, comfortable with in terms of if you are mostly you have done your impact system studies in your PSCAD or in your MATLAB uh, Simulink uh, or you generally want to uh, explore a whole new software, uh, you will approach uh, um, each of these. So, uh, for example, RSCAD is more close to uh, PSCAD and you can directly import PSCAD models uh, uh, to RSCAD, they have the conversion tools, uh, but you also can import somehow MATLAB, uh, uh, Simulink uh, examples as well. Uh, Opal RT is more close to uh, to MATLAB, Simulink, uh, so they have also their own independent uh, uh, software um, as well, and then Typhoon is totally independent. So it really depends uh, case by case, it's different. Uh, and uh, depends on your uh, special needs and, and cases. Uh, you may approach uh, uh, any of these softwares. All of them perform the, the end result, the real-time simulations. Also, another thing you may have in mind is the uh, uh, completeness of the library and the examples that they have, uh, because we see a lot of uh, uh, new components coming into the network, uh, which may not be uh, available as a um, uh, standard library but uh, uh, be available as an example in that uh, uh, software that you can utilize. Uh, I hope this uh, would be sufficient for this question. Great, thanks, Eva. Uh, the next question I'll take, it's a question of, will you email the PowerPoint files? So our file is actually too large to email um, because it does have the embedded video. But what we'll do, we're recording the session today and we'll put it on our website it actually is hosted on our YouTube channel. So everyone will get a link when we send out the answers to the Q&A. We'll provide you a link so that you can go back and revisit the presentation at any time because it will be out on that YouTube channel and linked to our website. The next question is between the three platforms of real-time simulators, RTDS, Opal RT, and Typhoon, which one do you recommend to utilities? 
Who would like to take that? I think maybe Prosper? Prosper, you are on mute, I think. Uh, I can take uh, that question. Uh, thank Great. you for the question. I'm a Prosper. So between uh, the platform um, RTDS, Hopal RT, and uh, uh, Typhoon, uh, which one uh, do we recommend to the utility? Uh, one more time, uh, this is uh, a case uh, per case solution. So uh, what uh, who will advise uh, to the utility? All utility, they uh, do not necessarily have to have a real-time simulator in their facility. Uh, running uh, this uh, real-time simulator requires uh, a expertise and also uh, require investment. This is why us at KNA, we have uh, understood uh, your concern and we have this uh, opportunity uh, so uh, utility can come to us and uh, we can help them. We know that we have a number of utility in the US uh, who have uh, a uh, real-time simulator in their installation, but uh, uh, this uh, has not to be limited uh, to utility. We are thinking about the large user potential like uh, all the developer of uh, uh, microgrid. So uh, you are a developer of microgrid, uh, come to us. You don't need, you know, to have uh, a RTS and we will help you uh, to uh, Make sure uh, you have the proof of concept uh, for your microgrid. You have a piece of proof that you can uh, bring to the utility to say, I'm ready to connect my uh, DER to uh, your power grid. Thank you. Thanks, Prosper. Another question is, for a developer of DERs in South America, how can you help? And I certainly know that we're able to work really with any of our developers and utilities across the globe. Um, KNA is headquartered in the Northeast, um, but we are located really all across the United States. We have an office in Canada, uh, a large workforce in Nepal. So we're quite well versed in working um, really across the globe. I don't know if any of the other experts would want to weigh in on some particulars on how we can help. Yes, Anna, so I, I can uh, add some uh, to that. Uh, it really doesn't need uh, our physical uh, presence to be there. We can, uh, of course, we need to see the cases, uh, but we have uh, previously agreed that uh, we can perform the entire process and we can provide uh, even witness test for our clients uh, if they need so we can it could be virtual or it could be uh, that they can send uh, uh, somebody to to present in the lab and and uh, witness the entire process for the tests that have been performed and they will uh, of course receive all the the details of the project so uh, it doesn't really uh, requires them to be uh, within us or uh, within our headquarters uh, we can uh, they can reach out to us from anywhere in the globe. Thanks, Eva. Uh, we have a time for just a few more questions. The next one is, what is the difference between power hardware in the loop, PHIL, and control hardware in the loop, CHIL? Uh, I can uh, help with that question. Uh, in the video we saw, um, if you go back to uh, this, uh, we have a transmission line interacting uh, with the two devices, two relay. One distance relay is modeled inside the simulator. This is called the computer uh, modeled relay. At the, at the end of the transmission line, we have a physical relay. In this case, it's a hardware uh, uh, so it's the for 21. This is called hardware in the loop. So uh, let's think another scenario. 
let's replace the relay CL421 with uh, an application where we have a solar generation that can connect to the power grid uh, to send the power grid to the utility. And actually, the main utility is inside the RTDS. So let's say that uh, we connect the solar generation to inject the power in the utility inside the RTDS. This is what we call power hardware in the loop. Power hardware in the loop is more complex. Uh, a real-time simulator uh, is not able to receive power in. So we need uh, to think that power somewhere we will be using a four quadrant amplifier uh, for this case. The second challenge is uh, the level of signal coming from our solar generation uh, to be sent inside the RTS in way to interact with uh, the power grid. Uh, for this, uh, we'll be having the normal level, 120 to 20, depending. So we need to have interface, CT and the PT, uh, to bring those level on the level that the RTGS can accept. And we have to make sure that uh, uh, all the signal we send back uh, forth and uh, uh, two direction uh, are uh, not bringing any saturation. So uh, this is... Uh, my contribution. Thank you. Thanks, Prosper. Uh, I think we have time for one more question. Uh, the one I'm seeing is, I'm a utility with RTS installation. Can you guys give training to our engineers? Okay, I'll, I'll take this question. Thank you. Uh, currently, we train our engineers internally and we are capable to do that training for the outside customer as well. Currently, we are not having those those facilities yet, but in the future, we might extend this service too. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Puru. And I'd like to thank the audience uh, for attending today's webinar. And again, thanks to our three presenters, Hiva, Puru, and Prosper. Um, we will be sending out a survey with uh, the Q&A as well as the link to today's recording. Um, so be on the lookout for that email. And again, if you have any questions on today's presentation that we didn't get to answer, um, you can send us an email to our generic email at sales at kapower.us. We invite you to connect with us on LinkedIn and look out for our next webinar in 20. 22. So again, thank you all for attending. Have a great and safe day. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you all.